Hey, what's up everyone? It's Michael with Color Cubic, and I'm back again with another two-part tutorial. Now in this tutorial series, what I'm going to show you how to achieve is creating an escalator in Cinema 4D, like you see here. Now I'm going to split this up into two videos, and the first part of this video, I'm going to get you set up with the escalator itself and the basic functions of the escalator. It's a pretty easy process, and it really only involves a cube, a spline, a cloner object, and a couple materials. The second part of the video, what I'm going to show you how to achieve is creating a seamless animatable loop of the escalator, and then we're also going to create the sides of the escalator. So you can get this full escalator experience, and then you can take that and place it in any kind of environment or scene that you want. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. Now, I'm working in Cinema 4D R16 as usual, and if you're working in an earlier or later version, you should be able to follow along verbatim without any problems. But if you're working in an earlier version and you do encounter some problems, or some of the parameters that you see on my screen aren't available on your screen, uh, go ahead and leave some questions or comments about that in the comments section, and I'll do what I can to try to rectify that and if possible, come up with an alternative solution where you're still achieving the same results. So right away though, let's go ahead and just jump right into this. Now I'm going to come up here to my object tab and I'm just going to click this cube once. So now that we have a cube on the scene, I'm going to come over here to my objects tab and with the cube selected, I'm going to come down here to the object tab of my cube and now I just want to start adjusting the size parameters of this cube. So for starters, I'm going to change the X value from 200 centimeters to 180 centimeters. Next, I'm going to adjust the Y value from 200 centimeters to 50 centimeters. And finally, I'm going to adjust the Z value from 200 centimeters to 70 centimeters. Oops. There we go. So now that that's done, I'm going to come back up here to my Objects Manager, and with my cube selected, I'm going to press the C key on my keyboard to make my cube editable. Now what I want to do is I just want to double-click this cube and rename it to Step. So now that that's done, I'm going to come over here to my Live Selection tool, and next, I'm going to come down here to my Edge Selection tab. So now that I've done that, I'm going to press the Alt Option key on my keyboard and then click and drag to rotate. And now I'm going to zoom into my step and I can achieve that by either scrolling with my mouse like this or alternatively come up here and utilize this. So all I want to do is I just want to select the first edge, the first bottom edge of my step, just this one. I don't need any other edge, just this first one. And with this bottom edge selected, I'm going to right click and come down to bevel. So in the attributes window of my bevel, I just want to adjust firstly the subdivision of this edge. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and then press the up arrow in this menu. And what that'll do is that'll increase the subdivisions by a value of 10. Next, I want to come up here to offset and I just want to increase this let's just say by 48 centimeters. There we go. That looks good. And now I want to come back to my live selection tool and then just deselect off the screen. So now I'm going to zoom out again. And now I'm going to come up here to MoGraph and then come down to Cloner and select Cloner. So now that I have these two objects on the scene, I want to press this box here to jump out of the perspective window and I want to come down here to the right side window and then press that same box. So now that we're in here, I'm going to come up here to my spline tab and click and hold this and select linear spline. Next, I want to come down here and click and enable the enable snap. So now that that's turned on, I'm going to click and hold this and come down to edge snap and enable edge snap. Next, I'm going to click and hold this again and come down to work plane snap and enable a work plane snap. And finally, I'm going to click and hold this again and come down to grid point snap. Now the reason we're enabling all of these snaps is because we want to build out the initial shape of our escalator. And to ensure that the dimensions are exact, we want to enable the snaps so the linear spline snaps to the grid. 
So you can go ahead and follow along with what I'm doing, or you can try to create your own special uh, escalator shape. But essentially, there's a technique to it. So if you follow along, you'll get a pretty basic idea of how that shape can be achieved. So I'm just going to create that real quick and uh, try to follow along as best you can. So now that I've done that, I'm not going to connect the spline entirely because you can't do that just by you know, connecting one end to the, the beginning end to the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to come over here to the attributes tab for the spline and come down to close spline and check that. And now my spline is fully closed. Next, I'm going to come back to my live selection tool. And what I want to do is I'm going to click off the scene real quick. And now I'm just going to grab these four endpoints of the spline that we just created. Next, I'm going to drag up, and I'm going to do this a couple times. There we go. So now this gives me a basic idea of what I need to change with uh, with the spline. So I'm going to come, I'm going to come under here for this this part of the spline and just drag out to come over one uh, one segment. And next, I'm going to come up to this top one and then drag this over to the left one segment. And now it looks like my shape is even. Next, what I want to achieve is I just want to grab the front and back points of my spline. And now with these, these four points selected, I'm going to right-click, come down to Chamfer, and then immediately I want to click Apply. Next, I want to come up here to Radius, and I just want to increase this in real time. And we want to increase the radius to 100 centimeters. Now that we've done that, Let's go ahead and click off the scene and then come back up here to this box. So we jump out of the right side view of our camera and then we want to come back to our perspective view of our camera by clicking that same box. So here we are, we have our basic escalator shape and here's our step. So let's come back up here to our objects manager and with our step selected, I'm going to click and drag and drop this in our cloner. Next, I want to come to our cloner object and I want to come down here to the object tab of our cloner and in mode I want to change this from linear to object. Next I want to come back up here to our spline, click and drag and drop this in the object window of our cloner object. So right away we're getting some pretty weird results and unfortunately these are not the results we want but we can fix this pretty easily. So with our cloner object selected and our objects manager Let's come down here to the object tab of our cloner object. And first thing we want to do is we want to come to distribution and we want to change this from count to even. Next, we want to adjust the count number by increasing this to, let's go ahead and just say, we'll say 45. That looks good. We want the steps to be touching, but we don't want them to overlap, but we can get pretty close by doing this. And we can adjust this later once we get everything arranged the way we want it to look. So the next step is we want to come to Align Clone, and we only need to uncheck this and watch and see what happens. This is exactly what we're looking for. By unchecking Align Clone, this gives us the exact shape and the rotation of our steps so that everything is facing the direction we want it to. And now, after this, all we need to do to animate this, with our cloner object selected and our objects manager, we come down here to the object tab again, and all we need to do is adjust the offset value. So if we just press this little radio button here, if we just click this once, that'll enable a keyframe on our timeline. So now all we need to do is jump to the end of our timeline, increase the value of the offset, and you can increase that by however much you want. And once you've increased it, come back to this little radio button for the offset, click that again, and that'll enable another keyframe at the end of the timeline. And now if we just jump to the beginning of our timeline and press play, you can see how our escalator is animating. And this is essentially just the simple building blocks of our escalator. It's a really simple process. It's really not that complicated.
But before we end the video, what I'd like to do is I'd like to throw on some textures to the steps of our escalator, simply because if you've ever paid attention to a real escalator before, you can see that the steps, they have these grooves, these extruded grooves, and the point of those grooves is essentially to make sure that people don't fall off the escalator. So it's a really easy technique to employ to get that, that same look and feel. How I used to do it when I would create escalators for my scenes is I would actually increase the segments of my cube before converting it to an editable object. And so I would have a ton of segments in my cube and then I would extrude every other segment to get those really thin lines. And although that looked decent, the unfortunate result was that it increased the render time by a crazy amount. Later I learned I could just achieve that same result using a bump map uh, of a material and it didn't increase the render time nearly as bad as just increasing the segments of the step. So, and because we're utilizing a cloner, we want to try to keep the segments down uh, as much as possible. So what we can do to achieve that is to come down here to create and new material. Now let's come back up here real quick to our objects manager and with our cloner selected, let's just click this green check mark. And now let's come down here to our step and select step. And let's go ahead and just zoom in, which we can achieve by either scrolling or utilizing this, uh, this tool here. So now that we've done that, I want to come over here to my surface polygons tab. And now I want to press the U key on my keyboard. So U as in unicorn. Then I want to press L as in loop. And I just want to select everything but the two sides of this step. So now that I've done that, I'm going to come back over here to my live selection tool. And then I'm going to come down here to this new material I just created and drop that. Whoops. And drag and drop and put that on the step with the selection. Now that I've done that, I'm going to deselect off the screen and then I'm going to create a whole new material. Next, I'm going to come back to my step and I'm just going to select the sides of my step. So once I've selected one, I'm going to press the Alt Option key on my keyboard and hold that down, and then I'm going to click and drag with my mouse to rotate around the object. And next, before I make this other selection, I'm going to hold down the Shift key to ensure that the other selection, the first selection I made, is retained. So I have both selections. Now that I've done that, I'm going to come to this new material I just created and click and drag and drop this on those selections. So you can see these tags have been created for each selection. This first tag, however, this is the one that we want to adjust. So in our objects manager for our step, let's come to this first material tag and let's double click this. And now what we want to do is we want to come over here to the basic tab and we just want to enable the bump map for our material. So let's go ahead and check that. So now you can see the bump map tab has been enabled. Now that we're in this tab, Let's come down here to Texture, and let's press this little arrow button. Now that we've done this, let's come to Surfaces, and let's come up here to Checkerboard and select Checkerboard. Now before we go into the Checkerboard and start adjusting this, let's go ahead and increase the strength of this by 30%, so a total of 50%. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and click inside the Checkerboard. So for starters, we just want to zero out the V frequency of our Checkerboard. So let's go ahead and just click zero and tab out. And now for the U frequency, we want to increase this to 49. So just go ahead and select the value that's in there and then just change it to 49. And now let's go ahead and go back to our main screen. And now I'm just going to zoom in to my perspective window. And let's do a quick RAM preview just so you can see what this material is doing now that we've increased a bump map. So if you're on a Mac, go ahead and press Command-R. If you're on a PC, Control-R. So you can see we're getting those extruded lines in our steps, and that's precisely what we want. Now, I don't have any proper lighting in my scene, and I certainly don't have any, uh, any really impressive renders enabled in my scene, so this isn't going to look the greatest. But, uh, you know, this is exactly how we want to achieve this. So...
with that said, let's come back over here to our objects manager. And then with our cloner selected, let's go ahead and press that red X to enable our, uh, our escalator. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and just press play. And that's the basic function of our escalator. Really simple process, not too complicated. And you know, it, it does exactly what you want it to do. If you ever want to reverse it, all you need to do is change the end value from a positive value in our offset to a negative value. And then make sure to repress the, uh, the offset, the radio button for the offset, just so it updates the keyframe. So now if we go back, we have a reverse value of our escalator. So it's going up instead of down. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the first part of this tutorial series. So if you have any questions or you got lost, don't forget to leave your questions or comments in the comments section, and I'll be sure to reply to you as promptly as I can. Otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe, and stay tuned for the next video of these Escalator tutorial series. Thanks again for watching, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.